everyone. It's great to see you again. Um, I'm super excited to have you meet Dr. Patty. Um, we were just having a conversation about dogs and goats. So um, you can't ever tell where a conversation is going to lead to. I also just want to encourage all of you to know that how you start your journey may not be how your journey ends or, you know, how you start your journey. There could be dips and swerves and ups and downs and twists and all arounds and spirals um, a along the way. And, and it's all OK. Um, you know, we can serve as chiropractors in so many different capacities. And um, I'm really excited to have all of you get to know Patty. She will be joining us at the Divas and Goddesses of Chiropractic at Sherman College on July the 13th. And uh, to Randy Cohen, um, who brought us together for this event. Patty and I were both practicing in Michigan at the same time. And now our roads have taken us to different states. Patty's in Florida. I'm up in Alaska, but we both did have our beginning way up in Michigan. Um, I also want to say, hey, Lena joined us all the way from Panama and Maria from the other side of the ocean in the UK. So ladies, thank you so much for joining us. And there's Kat. So Kat, good to see you too. Um, so Patty, let's just jump in and I want to tell you thank you for joining me. You're welcome. Um, so let's just start with how important has gratitude been in your life with the, the last 365 days? Holy moly, that's a big word to use right now. <laughs> My gratitude has been amazing. Um, <laughs> As I was explaining earlier that, you know, I had a cancer diagnosis back in March and at the time didn't know really where I was going from there. And I just not have so much gratitude to be alive is one thing. And two, to get up in the morning. And since there's probably all women on this and I don't, it doesn't matter to me if there is or not, just to be able to go to the house and know you're not going to bleed all over the place. That is huge. So my gratitude has been immense. My husband, he was a trooper. I don't know how he put up with me. I still don't know how he puts up with me because it was, it was an amazing, tough experience. So I'm so grateful that number one, chiropractic, you know, I've been under chiropractic care since I was 12 years old and that's about 48 years now. So, uh, I have so much gratitude for the profession and for the chiropractors that have taken care of me and the friends. And I think that's one thing I found out. You really find out who your true friends are when you go through something like that. Amen. Amen. When adversity hits, it's real evident who's on your team. Right. right? <laughs> that is for sure. Yeah. So. Yeah. You know, um, let's, Let's talk for a second about, you know, like it's disease isn't supposed to happen to chiropractors, right? That's like, for sure. We kind of preach that to our practice members, like get adjusted. Um, and I don't think any of us believe like get adjusted and bad things don't ever happen to you, you know, like in your health. But then that definitely is something that we understand that you're going to be better off. But I think sometimes that you'll be better off regardless of what you're going through if you're under regular chiropractic care. So can we talk about um, when you found out, what were some of those like real raw emotions about like, oh, I thought this has happened to me. Like I'm a chiropractor. I'm under chiropractic care. Like I take care of myself. Like this must be the wrong address. It, it was, you know, it was really... I should have, I had been having problems for close to three years, but I went through some emotional stuff. I lost my mom and, you know, there's a lot of emotions centered around that. And then that's when the symptoms began after that, but I was getting help and I was doing better. And then when I finally had to, re, you know, like my blood level got so low, my hemoglobin got so low, I had to get treatment. I had to get care from the medical profession. Mm -hmm. And when I found a gynecologist, I happened to call up a, a naturopath that I had seen prior and said, who would you go to if you needed to go? And she gave me somebody. And I walked in and the first thing she told me was I was born and raised on an organic farm in Boulder, Colorado, 
And I was one of six kids born in a bathtub at home. And I'm like, thank you, God, you sent me to the right place. So I knew, yeah, I waited, but there was a reason I waited. And that was the reason. And then when she said she had to do a biopsy, that was a tough thing because I always told my parent patients, don't do that. If there's any cancer there, it's going to spread. And here I'm like, yeah, just take me and do it. But I was desperate at that time. Yeah. But, you know, and when she said, has anybody ever said the word cancer to you? And I'm like, yes, they have, but I didn't really listen. And the way I found out that I had it, that's a whole nother story. And it made me realize how we are to our patients and how we communicate with them is so important because I found out that I had cancer by the doctor, the gynecologist oncologist's office calling me to make an appointment. And they said, hi, this is so-and-so I'm calling and make an appointment for you. And I'm like, I don't even know what kind of doctor you are and who are you? Because they never got hold of me to give me the results. And so then, you know, she couldn't give me the results. I had to get hold of the doctor. And when they told me it was malignant, I'm like, holy crap. You know, I'm like, whoa. Yeah. So wow. I never thought that would ever, because I, I work out, I eat right. I get it, you know, I'm chiropractic care since I was 12 years old, like I said. And, you know, it's almost 48 years ago. So how could that happen? But I realized when you're under a lot of stress, even though I work with people like that and help them to deal with their issues, I'm human. So it just, you know, that was huge. That was a huge. Oh, thing. my goodness. I'm so glad that you brought that up. And I'm glad that we're going to be able to all at the Divas and Goddesses talk openly, you know, like, and, and, and I want to thank Patty. She is also a sponsor of of tickets for students. So every speaker has stepped up to say, yes, I believe in this so much that I want to make sure students come. So you're right. Sometimes it's so easy just to, to get going in our day to day and, and to fail to see the person we're serving as a, an, as an individual. And when they get told something new, even the word subluxation, like it's brand new to them. They don't know what it really means. Like what, what does interference mean? What does degenerative changes mean? Am I going to be a cripple like my grandma who has arthritis? Um, so I'm excited for you to share that story and just remind all of us that when you're speaking to an individual to care for them and speak with them as if you were on the other side of your own voice, right? And, and how would you want that message to be delivered? And, and, and even in, in what way, like um, it makes me think of Robin Williams had that movie called patch, mm -hmm. right? That was kind of a, a, along the same lines of saying like, Whoa, let's take a look at how, how we're addressing disease and relationships with human beings um, and as well to encourage chiropractors, like I'm, I'm so proud of even the young boot campers who will post in the boot camp things that they're like spotting in their practice members that get completely missed in, in the medical profession, right. like big things, tumors and malignancies and fractures and all of these different things. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, I'm so glad you guys were paying attention and school and that you're being present time conscious in order to be able to show up and serve those individuals. Um, and you know, a big word that you brought up stress. So what, what have you learned through this process regarding stress? And if you were talking to yourself 20 years ago, what advice would you give to yourself? <laughs> That's a big one. It's, you know, here I was, I raised two kids for 14 years on my own, and that was huge. And then when my husband and I combined the family, even though his kids were adult kids at that time, it just, there was a lot of stress involved. Not that, you know, anything was bad or what, it was just different. And so one of the things that I really learned through this process is learning to take care of yourself. And I remember this story years ago of somebody talking about when I was raised, especially if 
the kids needed new shoes and mom needed new shoes. Who got new shoes first? It was always the kids. But I've learned that if we don't take care of ourselves, there's no way we can take care of anybody else or help anybody else. We can take care of them, but we're just going through the motions. And if we're really connected to source and can take care of our needs first, sounds selfish, but it's not. And if we're not right, then nobody's right. And that's one of the biggest lessons. I overtrained for years. My whole thing, I, I was a runner from the time I was 12 years old wow. and ran. That's how I would deal with stress. I ran from stress. And, literally and figuratively, huh? <laughs> yeah, literally, you know, and that's how I'd get through pain. I, I was taught as a young kid. You never have pain. You just run through it. Okay. And then, uh, you know, it's just one thing after the other that got to me, like when my mom died, you know, it was that when you lose your mom, that is so totally different. Then my dad had a stroke two years or a year after she died. And oh. he's had another one. In fact, I'm going up next week to take care of him because he has to have some heart surgery done. And it's just been, you know, so I'm learning that I have to make me first, my life first, my relationships first, and then it makes you a whole lot healthier person. It's interesting how difficult, um, I've been nursing sciatica now for about nine weeks. And it, it, it's been this like chronic thing that shows up actually right after I opened my practice in 98, um, that spring, I had three bulge discs in my lumbar spine. So I would walk around on crutches in practice to try and like have the time to traction. Like mm -hmm. that was my traction, right? It was on, was on crutches. And finally God was like, uh, if you're not going to pay attention, I'm putting you on your back. And so I took a whole week off and, and laid flat on my back in ice and it's come back periodically. And in the last several weeks, well, it started actually right after the earthquake. Um, I started noticing all this stuff on my left side. I'm like, eh, it's just, you know, it's just the earthquake. And, you know, then we'd have another aftershock and it hit me again and hit me again. And, you know, I kept telling myself like, you're stronger than this. Don't let this bother you. Like toughen up Sally. <laughs> and, um, and then now this past week I got back from summer camp and, and worked a couple of days and I've been flat on my back since Wednesday night. And like the guilt that I feel and like, just like being, so like, come on, like you just said, like push through it, just push through it. You can yeah. just push through it. You can just push it, you know, like the, the running thing. And, and I have definitely been guilty of perpetuating that message as well. You know, it's such a fine line because in one hand, I feel like in society, we're kind of encouraged a little bit too much to listen to our feelings and to let them run amok. But then on the other side, I think the more serious feelings we're taught just to ignore them. Or, you know, if you talk about your feelings as a woman, you're a nag or you're a whiner or whatever. So that, and I don't think it's a balance and, and maybe it's each woman has to go through that journey on her own and really decide, you know, is this a feeling that I should really be taking notice of? Or is this something that like, no, I'm fabricating I don't, I don't really know how to do that. I'm hoping that this coming weekend, we can all kind of gain some, some clarity and help each other because everyone who's going to be there this weekend has such different experiences. So what's your take on that, Patty? Well, the, the thing is through this process, I have learned so much as far as the trapped emotions that we have. And that's one thing that we work with people, eliminating your trapped emotions and helping mm. you get rid of that, breaking through barriers that are holding you back from achieving your dreams. Mm. And through the process of, I, I don't want to say this to scare you, but my original issue started out as I couldn't move. Well, I went to get in bed one day, I couldn't move. And I'm like, I've never had a back problem in my life. <laughs> Right. Ever. And, right. Like, and then I felt horrible for all those patients that you tell them, you know, they come in crawling in and you get up on the table, roll over. Like they said they couldn't move. It's like, what are you, a baby? Yes, you can move. I found out. Yeah, it, it gets that bad. 
So through that process, I, I started working with somebody as to eliminating my issues of my past and that were just buried inside of me that I didn't even really realize, mm -hmm. even though I've been doing, oh my gosh, so much work over the years, this was a different level, another level and another. It's like an onion peel. We're constantly peeling back and peeling back. And so that is the work that I, we, my husband and I have been doing with people over the years, do it with chiropractors. We were just this weekend um, or last week in Colorado working at a, a facility called Stepping Stones where kids from a low income families go to after school. And we have people there that had been, these were the facilitators there, people that have soup, well, were victims of suicide, meaning the one person, her, her son, 15 years old, committed suicide. And then her ex-husband the year prior, the exact same way, we were working with people that have had um, sexual abuse and diff different emotional traumas and, and injuries. So that's what we were dealing with. Oh. And we work through that process to help people. So here I'm helping people, but yet I had some of my own crap still. And it's just a constantly working at it. And so we have ways that we do that. And, you know, tapping and, and just a lot of emotional work that we do. So that we work with a lot of people. So it made me realize that, you know what? I don't think you're ever a hundred percent because there's always another level. And the only person I know that's a hundred percent, well, you know who that is. And it's, it's definitely God, not me. Yes. Yeah. I love that. You know, like in the boot camp, we always say be be grateful but never satisfied. Right. And that's not only with our level of success, but I think that also um it made so many people I talked to about mindset. And they're like, Oh, I worked on mine a while ago. I'm like, Yeah, exactly. Oh, well, it's not really a destination. It's kind of a journey because if you're if you're the same person today you were yesterday, we got some problems, exactly. right? If you're the right. same person tomorrow. And 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 I love that you you and Patrick are are helping individuals to go through that process and understand that process. Alok Trivedi and I um, did week 21 in the boot camp recently called Mastering Fear. Um, and going through like anger and bitterness and and like all of that cascade of fear and this idea of balance, which is such a fallacy that I I see stressing people out so badly. So I had this. You'll love this. I um I was on an airplane coming back from I don't even remember which trip to be honest with you, and and as I sat waiting because we were like in a huge lineup and I was looking out on the tarmac, I'm like, you know what's so bizarre. Is like when we're in Cairo school, none of us think about balance. Like none of us are worried about balance. None of us are worried that we're missing a family picnic back home. None of us are worried about this thing or that thing. We have our minds completely focused on graduation. I want to get that degree. And it's easy to say no to everything else because we're so committed to saying yes to graduating, right? Mm -hmm. And then we get into practice and it's like, whoa. Got to balance, got to balance. I don't want to be considered a workaholic. I don't want to be considered this. I, uh, and it's like, wait a minute, you're now in the game. Yeah. And everyone has to decide for themselves what that looks like. And I think the same is true with our emotions that it's something that we're constantly working out. Like the Bible talks about work out your salvation with fear and trepidation, like that you're, you're figuring it out. You're growing in that all of the time. And I really think that's the greatest sign of life is that we're growing. And in some, some capacities, we're going to be growing in this area and this one's going to take a back seat for a little while. And other mm -hmm. times we're growing here and da, 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 da. So I know that you, you obviously, when all of this hit, had to just kind of go, okay, take a step back, right? There are different focuses right now. Talk to us for a minute about those conversations that you had in your mind about having to take a step back. That was huge for me because I've always, again, pushed 110%, you know, when, when I was on the state board of chiropractic in Michigan, 
I was on for eight and a half years. You're only supposed to be on for eight years. Well, they had called me and wanted me to stay on longer. I'm like, mm, I've had enough. But that's just the point is, you know, I've had enough of that. But even in practice, you know, I always wanted to see more. I always wanted to do more. And now when they, I couldn't do anything. I couldn't even work out. And for me not to work out, I don't even like myself because I can't, I, that's how I release my inner, my whatever is through working out. So from then there became a point, I couldn't even make it from our bedroom to the kitchen without resting in between. And, you know, my, my family, first time ever in, I don't know how many years, my two sisters were coming out for a visit and my father and they got out here, I couldn't do anything with them. Then my stepson and the grandkids came and his wife. And I always, I'm like the cool grandma that plays with them all the time. You know, I had plans where we're going to do this, we're going to do that. I sat in the chair. I did go fishing with them one day and I'm pulling in this little fish and I thought I was going to pass out. So, so for me to not do anything, it was what I would call pure hell because <laughs> I just, you ask my husband, I just, my mood was horrible. One, because I would sit up all night in pain with cramps and I literally could not walk without almost passing it out. So not being able to do anything, it was devastating to me. Mm. And so that anything that we were doing as far as mentoring, coaching, whatever you want to call it, doing our workshops, we had to turn everything off totally, 100%. Right. And so that was, you know, hard. I remember one time being out of practice, I think for maybe four weeks when I had my babies. And that was hard. You know, I kept walking up to the office just because I <laughs> guess it's a habit, right? You know, I, I don't think they diagnosed ADD or ADHD when I was a kid, but they probably would have diagnosed me. As <laughs> My husband says that and he says, uh, man, if we had had YouTube when I was growing up, if people would watch it, my, my brother and I did, or my friends and I, they, I mean, it's a miracle that they're alive. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's for sure. They would have had censored YouTube for sure from what they did. Um, well, I want to say hello to some individuals who've joined us. Denise Russell and Jill Thompson and Kat and Lena and Maria and Dina. And Dina, I love how you said, not a coincidence, I'm hearing this message right now. And thank you, Dina, for your love and support. I'm so grateful for my tribe. They're uh, we all are bound together pretty tightly with one another. And um, and I encourage any of you, um, you know, you don't have to be a chiropractic student or a chiropractor to join us at the Divas and Goddesses of Chiropractic Give Back, July the 13th. It's nine to five on Sherman's campus. Um, it, your ticket includes a catered lunch. So um, we're all just gonna be in a room together during lunchtime. We're gonna have a panel discussion I'm going to throw out some questions to the speakers um, and then you'll all be able to hear them as well. Your audience will be asking questions. So please, please, please get in your car, drive to Sherman College this weekend, plan to be there with us nine to five. I'll put the link below to be able to join us. Um, you know, I would encourage you to get to know each speaker, sit and talk with Dr. Patty. You don't know when you will be faced with the same diagnosis or someone that you love. And I truly believe that we're all, you know, we're, we're brought together to learn from one another, if maybe not for something that we ourselves will go through, but somebody that we know and love. Um, you know, I know having been, you know, cheated on my entire marriage, it's given me a different platform to talk to women because I get it. You going through cancer, you get it. Yeah. You get what that's like. And so um, I believe all of us together, you know, every single one of us, plays a different part in this whole story. Um, so please do whatever you can to be there. If you're a nursing mom, please bring your baby. Toddlers, you know, that makes it really difficult in, in a, a conference environment for a toddler. I mean, think of your baby, not necessarily the rest of us, but it's hard for a kid to hold still that long. But nursing babies, 
who nurse and go to sleep. Yeah, bring them. Just make sure we all get to hold them um, <laughs> and love on them a little bit. So, Patty, anything you'd like to say in conclusion? You know, it was just when you were talking and you, know, you were talking about how women, you know, really need to come together. And I have to be honest, for years, I'm like, ah, oh, those women's group, forget that stuff. I don't need that. And, you know, I was so against it. And but I'll tell you, going through this, it has made me realize that it is so important that we are supporting one another. And with 50, more than 50% of the students now being females, I believe it's more important than ever that we're out there helping them because no, they shouldn't be second class. They're not weak. And don't tell me you can't adjust somebody because of their size. I, I have for a period of time, my office adjusted and worked with the Detroit Lions football team. And those were some big dudes. Those are big dudes. Big dudes. They would come to my house on their days off and we'd adjust them. So, you know, don't give me that. And it's just, I feel it's so important now more than ever that we are supporting one another. And I, I get it more than I ever have. So, you know, that is, and, and it's amazing how we sort of reconnected through Randy. Thank you, Randy. Yeah. And, uh, and I'm looking forward to coming on uh, the weekend. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. And, and you know, it's funny. I, I, I used to have the same opinion about women's groups. Like, eh, I don't need that. They're going to sit around and drink tea and, like, who's got the time, right? Like, I got stuff to do. And, you know, it's interesting, though, when, when you find your tribe, like, when you find, so this is the definition that my tribe and I have come up with about us a group of people that becomes your family, the people that will be there for you no matter what and who you are guaranteed to have a great time with. Although people may not understand how close you are and your relationships with each other may seem perplexing to those on the outside, it doesn't matter because you all love and accept each other. Once a tribe is established, they stay together forever. And, and I have found like there's so many women who feel or who have felt just like you and I have felt like, that as women, we've kind of been on the outskirts because, you know, we, we kind of see business differently or like our tenacity or our guts or ah, that. And and so when I created the boot camp and all these women were coming out going, oh, me too. I'm that, me and me and me and me and me. And it's just like, it's so cool to see everyone come together. And, and you know, a lot of women in the boot camp are athletes either, you know, had been collegiate athletes or just themselves had, have always been very, very physically fit and, you know, demanded a lot about out of themselves physically. We have two um, Olympi Olympians in the boot camp. Um, so at any rate, I'll be so excited to see you and, and, and continue this catch up. So yeah. again, please everyone join us this Saturday, July the 13th, Sherman College, the Divas and Goddesses of Chiropractic Give Back. So Patty, Thank you so much. It was great to see you and I'll see you on Saturday. That sounds great. Looking forward to it. All right, Thank take you. care. Bye-bye.